Hello everyone, welcome to Sendam Academy YouTube channel. So today we have got for you yet another question on differentiability. So let us first read the question and try to see how we can solve this question. So here the question says, let f of x be a piecewise function e to the power negative 1 by x square sine of 1 by x when x is not equal to 0 and it is 0 when x is equal to 0. We have to find the value of the derivative of this function at x equal to 0. Okay, so the first and the foremost thing is we need to first check is this function continuous because continuity is a necessary criteria for differentiability. Because of the option number D, we have to perform this test. So let us do that. So what is the left hand limit of this function as x tends to 0? So left hand limit at x equal to 0. So for that, we have to use the expression limit x tends to 0 minus e to the power negative 1 by x square sine of 1 by x. Now, Dear students, please note down that this particular function is a bounded function, right? What's a bounded function? Bounded function means its value is restricted between minus 1 to 1. And this function, e to the power minus 1 by x squared as x tends to 0 minus becomes e to the power minus infinity, which is tending to 0. So this fellow tends to 0. So overall, the product of something tending to zero into a bounded value is actually a zero. So the left-hand limit is actually a zero. Let us find out similarly what would be our right-hand limit at x tends to zero. So right-hand limit would be limit x tending to zero plus the same expression e to the power negative one by x squared sine of one by x. And again, the same story repeats is you are going to get a bounded function multiplied to something which is tending to zero, so giving you the result as zero. And what about the value of the function at zero? So it's only given to us in the question that the value of the function at zero is a zero, so f of zero is going to be a zero, right? Now, since the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit and the value of the function at zero, they match, that means, the function is continuous at x equal to 0. Okay, so this function is continuous at x equal to 0. So there is no issue with the continuity. So let's now move on to checking the left-hand derivative and right-hand derivative at x equal to 0. So let's find that out because the left-hand derivative and the right-hand derivative values, if they are equal, then only the function will be differentiable at x equal to zero and the value itself will be your derivative of the function. So let's find it out. Now for finding the left-hand derivative at x equal to zero, we are now going to use, we are now going to use the first principles. So f dash zero minus, that will be limit of h tending to zero plus f of 0 minus h minus f of 0 upon minus h. So what is going to be your f of 0 minus h? f of 0 minus h will be f of minus h and f of minus h will be e to the power minus 1 by h square sine of 1 by minus h. So minus will come out and f of 0 is already given to us as a 0. So no need to worry about that and your minus h comes down in the denominator. So this simplifies to limit h tending to 0 plus e to the power minus 1 by h square sine of 1 by h upon h. Now how to evaluate this limit? Let's try to see that. So for this, we are going to split the entire limit into two parts. One is e to the power minus 1 by h square upon h and limit of limit of sine of 1 by h, h tending to 0 plus. Now let us see this particular expression on the left side first. So let me call this fellow as L1 and let's call this as L2. Now L2 is something which is actually bounded. Please note, L2 is something which is bounded. It is somewhere between minus 1 to 1. Okay, so I do not know the value because this is an oscillating function, sine 1 by x oscillates very vigorously in the neighborhood of 0. So we don't know its exact value, but what we know is that it's a bounded value. It's a bounded value. Its value lies between minus 1 to 1. 
Okay, now about the limit L1. So let's find out the limit L1. So for the limit L1, we'll have to use our L'Hopital's rule. So what we can do is we can write this expression as limit S tends to 0 plus 1 by h divided by e to the power 1 by h squared. So mind you, my dear students, this is actually infinity by infinity form. So you can actually apply L'Hopital rule on this. So you apply L'Hopital rule on this, you have to differentiate the numerator first and differentiate the denominator and then take the limit again. So derivative of the numerator will be negative 1 by x square. Derivative of the denominator will be e to the power 1 by s square into minus 2 by h cube. Right, so this gives you the expression limit s tending to 0 plus um, h will come on the top. We'll have 2 e to the power 1 by h square. So this is tending to 0 divided by something which is very, very large, right? So this quantity has to go to 0, right? So what about the entire limit? So the entire left-hand derivative at x equal to 0 will be nothing but something tending to 0 into a bounded value, right? And this is going to become a 0 for sure. Right. In a similar way, in a similar way, you can also find out the right hand derivative at x equal to zero. So right hand derivative at x equal to zero will also be having the same fate. And this is going to be a zero value. OK, so left hand derivative and right hand derivative as x tends to zero are both equal to zero, which means the derivative of the function at zero is zero. So which option is correct? Let's check. So option number C, option number C is the right option for this particular question. I hope, dear students, you learn few concepts and especially the use of first principles to evaluate the derivative. Many of the students would actually like to use the direct method of derivative to get it. But in that case, your results will not be coming up as smoothly as you got in this case. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, subscribe and comment.